Hello and welcome back. And that is right. It's time to discuss the best cheap NAS of the year. Call it cheap. Call it cost effective. Call it value. Call it whatever you want. But ultimately, this video is about telling you right at the end of 2023 and the start of 2024, what are the best three, the top three cheap NAS you can buy. These are solutions that aren't going to hit your wallet too hard and you're going to get the very, very, very best bang for buck at the lowest, lowest entry point. Entry point is going to be key word in this because all of our solutions today should be considered entry level in their own special way. But before we go any further, a few disclaimers straight off the bat. Number one, all of the solutions I'm talking about today are the best cheap NASs you can buy now. Okay, it doesn't mean they were released in 2023. One of them at least wasn't even released in 2023, but it is about the best ones you can get right now at the end of 2023 and the start of 2024. Also, it's worth bearing in mind that all of these are considered turnkey solutions. That means they are combined hardware and software, key point there, arriving as a single solution. They also all arrive unpopulated, which means that you're not going to need to get a solution that already has the drives installed, which means you have to pay extra and not get the same level of choice. All of these are unpopulated. They also support cross-platform support, which means whether you are Mac, Windows, iOS, Android, doesn't matter, you can use it. Also, they all have to support partial population, which means they can't be a system that has to be fully populated straight out the gate. You have to be able to gradually expand the storage area. You can't have to be locked in in any way in that regard. And finally, two to three, three years manufacturer's warranty minimum. Any less than that, you're not making the list. But before we go any further, an honourable mention. All of these videos will have an honourable mention. And in this case, the honourable mention is this, the TerraMaster F2. Two, one, two. This got so close to being in the top three for reasons you'll see later on that it didn't quite make the cut. This utilizes the same quad core uh, ARM based CPU that a, uh, another solution in this list is going to feature the RTD 1619B. Also, rise with a gig of DDR4 memory there. It's also using TerraMaster's new chassis here. I quite like their new chassis, it's quite well designed. I would argue it's very similar to that of Synology. And really, the only reason it didn't make the cut is because right now, this system released in the last month or so, it's knocking around for about 150 to about 160 nickel, which unfortunately made it more expensive than two other solutions on this list. And given that the software that the TerraMaster platform has, TOS, isn't quite as evolved as some of the other ones out there, although they do have their own AI photo recognition app, they do have all of their backup and synchronization tools, and as an entry affordable point, it's still very, very good indeed. It has to be said that it was just because of that software that it just missed the cut in today's video. But nevertheless, if you do see the F2212 from TerraMaster out about in a decent little offer it is a great little NAS but for now let's crack on with our first official winner The QNAP TS233 actually made the cut last year as well. And although QNAP have released several solutions in the interim, it should be highlighted that their 233 system still, for me, is one of the best affordable cheap NASs out there. Bear in mind, of course, like all of the solutions on today's list, you are talking about entry level. You are talking about not spending loads of money. You are ultimately talking about saving a bit of bunts and getting the easiest, lowest entry point to get base level features. DLNA, getting your back Backups, getting your synchronized backups and all of the tools and features and functionality that modern NAS should provide. Now, I'm well aware this is the one bay model. This is the TS133, but the TS233 is this with an extra bay on the side. So we're just leaving this here on the table to make it easier. Knocking around at around about the 160 to 170 nicker mark and the one bay at about 130 to 140. This arrives with a quad core ARM based processor, the A55 at 2. Point, uh, sorry, uh, 1.8 gigahertz per core that can be um, uh, is combined, I should say, with 2 gig of DDR4 memory there. Very, very few ARM entry-level NAS devices arrive with that kind of uh, um, hardware architecture at 170 to 180 nicker. Now, it is a 1 gig Ethernet NAS, but it does arrive with features and functionality for the bulk of QNAP's QTS platform there. It also has an onboard MPU, which is an AI component embedded into the, the processor, which allows for enhanced performance of AI-related tasks. So again, 
That goes down to QMaga, QMaggy photo recognition, some of the surveillance applications as well, and utilising QSearch for searching intelligently across the system to find files as quickly as possible. Now, on top of that, the system also supports expansions. Those are the USB expansions that are available from QNAP there. And although it is a very modest box, it should be said that 170 to 180, you're getting a lot of features and functionality that most other brands do not give you at that price point. There was a reason that this was in my top three cheap nails last year, and there's a reason why it maintains that position one year on, simply because it gets very, very difficult to beat that level of hardware on this system while still maintaining a very low power consumption a very low uh, noise when in general use and features and hardware and an enhanced cpu over the rest of nas devices in the market right now all rocking out with that rtd 1619b processor they're going a little bit higher clock speed with the mpu on board and all of that arriving at a lower price than anyone else in the market right now But of course, we can't talk about good cheap NAS without talking about the Synology J series, and more precisely the Synology DS223J, released in the middle of 2023. It is the latest iteration to their value series, arriving with that RTD 1619B processor I mentioned earlier on. It also arrives with one gig of DDR4 memory. More, that's twice that of previous generation J series 2 bays that came before. But moreover than that, although the rest of the system hardware architecture is pretty much identical to every other 2 by j series NAS Synology have ever rolled out. I will say that Synology's DSM platform runs at its best on this compared with any other J series that came before it. What I mean by that? DSM 7.2 did roll out a lot of new features. Indeed, when you're looking at a Synology, the hardware shouldn't really be your focus. It needs to be the software. DSM is the dog's knackers. And DSM running on this and DSM 7.2, although, although it doesn't have volume encryption, no, it doesn't have right once read many. They are far too aggressive processes for an affordable NAS. I will say that this system does support the majority of other applications and services, Synology Drive, Synology Chat, Synology Video uh, Station, um, Synology's uh, Hyper Backup, Synology's USB Backup, Cloud Synchronization, Surveillance Station, they all run on this. You don't get access to Active Backup Suite, you don't have access to virtual machines, but you do have access to Docker. This thing actually rocks out with Docker support on a J-series box. And although this is about the best cheap NAS and it's worth highlighting that, of course, hardware has a part in that debate, I would still highlight that in terms of the best NAS for your money, in terms of software, it's still always going to be a Synology. And moreover, it's going to be the DS223J. Now, I already know I'm probably going to annoy some people in the comments with the fact that I have put the Link Plus LinkStation N1 as my third best cheap NAS of the year for this video. Why is that? Because this system is currently on crowdfunding over on, in, over on Indiegogo. And generally, as a rule of thumb, I do not like to include crowdfunded projects in these videos. I normally only look at solutions that are currently available right now. However, the reason I'm prepared to lay an exception to the rule on this device is as follows. One, these are getting reviewed everywhere gradually. This is going to be a solution that is going to be available on the market. This is not a pipe dream. I have tested it. I've spoken with Unraid about this. This is a system that arrives with an Unraid uh, uh, standard license included with it. And again, Unraid themselves have confirmed that mass production on this and with their licenses is going ahead. We've already started seeing this being reviewed on other platforms and we've seen the brand uh, Link Plus been around for a number of years in the in the laptop market, and we've seen their uh, team members and representatives at numerous trade shows uh, across the uh, across 2023 across the world. It is a legitimate product, and although it's available right now for about 230 250 nicker on crowdfunding, the intended full release price for this device, if you don't go for an early backer, is going to be between 250 and 300 nicker. Now. 250 to 300 nicker makes it uh, around about 40 to 50% more expensive than every other solution I've talked about in the video today. So why is this still listed as a cheap NAS? Why is it in the list? How did it earn its place? Well, for a start, this is an Unraid equipped 4x NVMe and 2x 
SATA 2.5 inch drive. It is a six bay NAS. It is a six bay NAS that's rocking out the gate with an Intel Celeron M5105 processor inside. It's also arriving with a decent amount of memory. When you all the solutions I talked about today have all rocked out the gate with either one or two gig of memory. This thing absolutely smashes them. Also, it's rocking out the gate with 2.5 gig of Ethernet, USB 3.2 Gen 2, and an HDMI output there. Although its utility within Unraid is slightly debatable. The point I'm making is that the reason this list of cheap NASes exists, uh, these are meant to be cheap entry level NAS devices. And although I could have gone ahead and put the TerraMaster ahead of this, as I mentioned in the introduction, with this device knocking around for about 150, 160 nicker, and this device hopefully knocking around at 250 or 300, we have to acknowledge that in terms of best value for money, while still being entry level, all of that hardware and indeed the capabilities of Unraid at this price point in this package is near enough unbeatable. And I would call 250 or 300 for what this has got inside outlandishly cheap. And that's why it made my third best cheap NAS of 2023 24. But there you go, those are the best cheap NAS of the year for you to look at. And if you're looking at saving yourself a bit of bunch and you just want a nice entry level NAS system to work as an alternative to an existing third party cloud platform, these are all absolutely insane solutions to go for there. I will say right now that of all of them, I still think this one down there is gonna be the most contentious, but it still gives you the most. Remember, for the hardware, for the software, for the capabilities and the honorable mention, those are the best solutions for you. now. If you want to learn more, there are links in the description to reviews, articles, performance tests, Plex, the works for all of these devices linked below. Additionally, if you need further assistance, use our free advice section on the right hand side of every page at NAS Compares or head over to Ko-Fi or Patreon to hire me or Eddie to help you with your data storage requirements. Join our membership tiers there for early access to the videos. And if you need even more support, head over to our Discord or Ask.NAS Compares for our community forum. But apart from that, have yourselves a great rest of the year. I hope you have a lovely Christmas, a fantastic new year, and I'll see you in 2024.